Graham, thank you very much for the invitation here at Angstrom Engineering. Now, I can see you're big into the uh, press tooling market, which lures me into automotive, but tell us a little bit about the background to your company. So, um, I started off in tool making about 1990 and did 20 years working for a company basically with no sort of formal training or apprenticeship. Um, and after 20 years of working for somebody else, I got itchy feet and decided that I'd like to do it myself. So 2009, which would appear to be a terrible time because of the global crash, uh, we decided to start up and have a go. Um, the plus side was that being in the industry already, we knew that there were an awful lot of cars being prepped up to be built during the global crash um, because we wanted cheap cars and uh, cost-effective stuff. So that combined with the fact that the machine tool prices had all gone down for the second-hand market meant that we'd got a good formula to get started. Now, when I look at some of the uh, machines that you actually got here, um, what type of parts are you actually making for the automotive sector? Well, all our tools are stamping tools or pressing tools which make high volume production. Uh, so the type of tooling is uh, single operation or manual transfer, or we do progression tooling uh, for which we have a 400 ton press with a coil feed which allows us to try out these tools when they're completed. That makes us quite unusual in the industry for probably only a handful of people with this facility. Does that give you the opportunity to win work that a lot of companies can't offer then with that press break? The, the, press, the tryout press opens doors for us immediately because very often the tier ones will automatically rule you out if you haven't got a tryout facility. So you could have a tryout facility which has got no feed inability Therefore, you can't pr prove that your tooling will operate at volume. You can only prove that it will work manually, but we can prove that it will work at volume. So therefore, the T1s get a turnkey package. Now, looking at the other side of, of, of press tooling is uh, obviously using EDM. Now, you've been using EDM for a number of years, but principally we're here on behalf of Warwick Machine Tools. Now, you've bought this uh, fantastic wire machine from Exatech via Warwick Machine Tools. Now, could you tell me why you chose this machine when you've been using other manufactured products in the past? Well, it really starts from the beginnings of Angstrom where we couldn't afford to buy new machinery to start up. So we had to take whatever came. Now, we had a, an excellent relationship with the Mac Rep guys when we found one in a scrapyard and they rebuilt it for us, which was a um, different make of machine. But uh, as we've grown and we've been able to afford newer machines, then uh, the price, it becomes very price sensitive. So there's a trade-off between accuracy, price, um, service inability, cost of ownership. And when we looked at everything on the market, when it comes, came to buy new machines, we found that the Exitec uh, on balance was the most appropriate machine for the time. And when you're buying these type of machines, it's not necessarily just about the actual capability of the machine, but it's also the backup and the training. Have you found that with Warwick Machine Tools? Yeah, the backup and the training is very good because they're quite local to us. We've known their engineers for a long time. Um, every time we ask a question, we get an answer. Um, there's very little we, we've asked them that we've never got an answer for. So uh, that's the important thing is the backup is very good. Now, I'm sure that a lot of automotive manufacturers will know your company, but by buying this type of machinery, brand new EDM machine, does it give you extra capacity to offer the market, Graham? Yeah, I think the important thing that we're trying to offer the market at the moment is speed of production. Um, very often, uh, the tier ones or the OEMs are very demanding and they need things very quickly. So while they seem to move very, very slowly approaching order, as soon as they place order, they want the jobs very quickly, and that means we've borrowed an expression from the computing world, which we call massive parallel processing, which means we have to make every component at the same time. So the more machines you've got, the better, and that's how the Chinese do it. And, and when you look at your company, you, you are quite rural out here, and I understand that you have had a grant to help you buy uh, specifically this machine. Yeah, we were very fortunate that um, the Rural Growth Programme has allowed us to access finance from Europe, uh, so we've bought uh, the wire erosion machine and a milling machine as well at the same time. Um, we have created jobs so we can employ people out of the agricultural community rather than the engineering community. There are plenty of people with a good skill set who can convert. So talking about investing in people, Graham, what do you have here? Well, we've got 16 staff and it's important to realise that it's not all about nice spangly new machine tools but a great team. Uh, everybody works very, very well together. We've got our own internal designers, our own internal CAM programmers, dedicated machinists, and of course, a good set of toolmakers, and that's what makes the tooling work.
Now, and I, I think that's a great thing to actually mention is that uh, a number of sectors like uh, press tooling, you know, it, it's very difficult to find tool makers these days. Uh, buying new machinery can de-skill it, but obviously you're looking at it from a, a, a both perspectives here, aren't you? Uh, the wire erosion, the de-skilling from wire erosion has not really occurred. Um, that all occurred in the, probably the 70s. So now it's just part of an accepted process. So if you haven't got enough wire eroders, then the tool makers probably won't be interested. So high-tech machinery attracts tool makers. Um, and also there is an element of luck in getting them to come to us. We're in a nice area. We're in the middle of a load of green fields. There's combine harvesters, there's wheat being grown, there are ducks, there are you know, all these things going on. And, and everybody who visits really likes to come here. Uh, and the people like to work here because they can have their breaks out by the river. There are fishing pegs all around the building. There are plenty of other things other than press tools here to attract tool makers. And I think that's quite important, you know, there, there is life outside of the engineering fraternity, but I think it's a great uh, engineering UK success story. Well done. Thanks, Graham. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming.